Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com. Welcome to Mastering On One Photo Raw 2018. In this video, we're going to take a look at the lens blur filter that's found in the effects module of On One Photo Raw 2018. The lens blur filter is probably one of those filters that people rarely use. Well, I kind of want to change that because I think the lens blur filter is a super powerful and effective filter and it will really make your image look unique. As a matter of fact, I could say that probably using selective blur in portraiture is a bit of my style. So if you see a lot of my portraits, you'd see often I use selective blur and you could easily do that with the lens blur filter. Now, in the description below this video, I'm going to have a link to a very famous photographer that often utilizes lens blur in his portraiture. His name is Gregory Heisler. Gregory Heisler does it, though, in camera. He uses tilt-shift lenses on medium and large format film cameras, and he has probably, um, he has probably more Time magazine covers than any other photographer. And I just want to just quickly show you what I mean by how he utilizes selective lens blur. In this image of Pete Seeger, at first glance it looks like just a fine image, but if you look a little closer, you'll notice that, and I couldn't really find a high resolution um, image. Uh, or of this image, a high resolution version of this image. So this is a relatively lower resolution version. But if you look closely, you'll see that his eyes and his face, his beard are in perfect focus. His fingers and fingernails are in perfect focus. Much of this side of the banjo is in perfect focus. But then it really, the focus falls off greatly as you go outside of his face and the part of the banjo in his fingers. The uh, headstock of the banjo is blurry. Uh, his clothing over here is real blurry and a little bit over here. So you could see how Gregory Heisler really utilized lens blur to enhance this portrait. He did the same thing with this image of Joyce Carol Oates. You could see her face is in perfect focus, her scarf, which is a nice color add to the kind of monotone image. Uh, and her um, sweater are in perfect focus. Her hands are in perfect focus. This hand and little table as a prop are in good focus. But if you look outside of her hair, her shoulders, and pretty much everything else is blurry. So that is really how you would utilize lens blur in portraiture. And that's why... I chose this image that we used in a previous episode of my son's band, Kill the Clock. We're going to use selective lens blur to enhance this image. Now, you remember in that previous episode, it was on the bleach bypass filter. So I'm going to leave that filter on, and we're going to go to add filter, and we're going to go to lens blur. And you can see, of course, it's one of those filters. As soon as you add it, it blurred the image. So what good is that? Well, let's go through the styles along the top, and then I'll talk about how you would actually utilize the lens blur filter. First of all, when you add it, it does you know, some blurring. But if we go across the top and look at the styles, the first one is tilt shift. And tilt shift typically will have a strip in the middle that is um, focused, and then outside of that strip is blurry. Then we have the side, so it's pretty much whereas the tilt shift style is horizontal, the sides style is vertical. So you can see the strip in the middle going vertical is in focus and the outsides, outside sides are blurry. Then we have round, so it's kind of round. You really can't see it as well in this image. Then we'll go to the drop down and there's a few more. We have bokeh large, bokeh medium, bokeh shapes, bokeh small, then we have the round sides again that we had up here. Then we have a soft vignette, starry night. And then we have that tilt shift again. And I'm going to pick uh, just something um, like, I don't know, just something you could see, like bokeh small for now. 
and then we'll go through these sliders. By the way, if you want to see all these styles side by side, if you go over to the left hand panel and click on the filters tab, you'll see all those styles side by side. And if you click on this little grouping of four bricks right there, you'll see a little larger version of those. And if you see one you like, like Broca Small, you could just click on it and it will apply that, that style to your image. Now, what do all these controls do? Well, I'm going to turn amount up quite a bit so you could see what amount does. And then we could go with optic quality. And really, um, it just is what kind of the bokeh is, even though there are other, you'll see down here, controls that do this a little bit as well. You can see if I move optic quality to the left, we get more circles. And those of you that are familiar with lens optics, if you're See those really kind of cheap, in dollar sense, uh, mirror lenses, they call them. And you could get them, they're like, you know, 2,000 millimeters, and they run like, you know, $200. And they're, they use a mirror. You'll often get a bokeh like this, with this kind of round circle. And as we move it to the right, we get more of a solid bokeh, like a better lens might get. So I guess you could say that optic quality, if we're at the very... A bottom minus 100 that's a cheap lens and if we go way up to the far right that's a more expensive lens but not necessarily now next we have this aperture section and we have sides and you're not going to see anything really right here um, curvature you could see how it kind of gets it a little more in focus if I go to the left we have blooming and that is an effect on some lenses where the parts that are out of focus will kind of bloom. They get kind of brighter. And that always isn't a desirable trait of a lens, but you could see that you could dial it in if you want it. Then we have brightness, and this is just brightness of the image, and contrast is contrast to the image, and then noise. You could add noise to your image uh, with that slider. Now, how would I normally go about applying a lens blur? Well, it depends, of course, on my exact image that I want to use. But whenever I do use the lens blur, I, am, I always use a mask. So what I'll do is I'll reset this. And I probably would start out with just this basic kind of blur and then move the sliders till I get something I like. Now, I'm not looking at their faces because I'm going to... Uh, clear the blur away from their faces with the mask in a minute but I'm looking at other parts of the image like their hands and their clothes and the stuff behind them then I would come in and just I just simply move sliders and just keep moving them until I see kind of something I want or like bring that one down that and I don't think I need to do too much with brightness and contrast because I kind of like the image as it was. But let's say I like this. Then what I'll do is I'll get a layer mask or a mask. I'll just click there and I have the white mask. Now I will paint out the effect where I don't want it. So I'm going to paint away the blur. Now I'm obviously going to paint it across their face. Now I kind of want it a bit on their foreheads or a bit at the top of their head. So I'm going to try to come in like this, like that, and then I'll get a smaller brush because I don't want a lot of their forehead. And I definitely want their eyes in focus. So we'll kind of go in like this, like this. And pretty much like that. I think maybe this one is a little bit too blurry in the forehead area. And I kind of like that. So I like how uh, Dan's hat is blurry, but his face is, and spe especially his eyes are nice and focused. Same thing, John, we just have the top of his head. Joe, the top of his head. And Mike, the top of his head. So then I'll come in after I do something like that. And I'll just re-move around the controls a bit and see what we got. And see if I could improve upon it. 
and I think optic quality more to the right. It's getting kind of some pixelation, especially of Joe's uh, flannel shirt that I didn't really care for. Let's see, we can move curvature down. Look at a more subtle look. So I'm going to move curvature down. You can see how the curvature kind of distorts the blur more. So I'm going to bring that down. And I'm going to bring blooming down as well. I want it relatively subtle, but obvious. I mean, you, you, you could see the blur, but I don't want it to really uh, distract too much from where I want people to look at their face. So um, that's pretty much it. That's uh, the lens blur filter, and I would encourage you to use it, try it. It may not be your style. You may not like this kind of selective blur. Um, I kind of, I would say maybe five years ago, I started liking portraiture again because I was getting bored with taking portraits. Then I started liking portraiture again when I started uh, using selective blur. So maybe you'll like it too. Give it a try. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.